Hey, it's back with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Wednesday. It's February 28th. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And quick look at our daily chart. Uh, we trended way down. It was mostly sideways, but prices went back and filled the overnight gap. Uh, you can see uh, there was a gap overhead that prices went back and filled. But they ended up closing down, but they closed way off their lows. So uh, most of the day, it's just kind of a, a sideways kind of day. But prices attempted to go up and fill, um, fill the overnight gap, but they weren't able to do it. So um, that gap is still there. But uh, I believe that's what the rally was. But we found some resistance right just below that that point. And, um, and then prices trended back down, but uh, they closed off their highs. So uh, you'll see it as we flip over to the 2000 tick chart. But this is what it looks like. A lot of stem here. Uh, it looks, still looks like this thing's trying to go high. It's trying its best to go higher. Uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. But um, yeah, there it is uh, on the daily chart. But let's flip over to the 2000 tick chart. Okay, here's our 2000 tick chart, and you can see we had this big sell-off early on, so prices opened at 8.30, um, way down here, and actually that just doesn't look right, let me look at that again. Okay, yeah, because this line is just prior to 8.30, so that's probably correct. It's probably where this line closed right here because it's supposed to come on at 8.30. So it's close. Uh, but here's where we closed the previous day. So there's that. Oh, so if you take this out, it looks like prices closed up here and then opened down here. And so that gap is what we're looking at. And usually prices will attempt to fill that gap on the same day. And you can see we attempted it. But look what happened. We went exact measured move uh, based on the width of this tight range here and that's what this line is and we went to that to the tick turned down and then came back down got back inside the range momentarily came back and tested tried to go higher again and we couldn't get above this resistance a lot of selling coming in there at that price and it sold off again back into the range where we chopped around and uh, it looks like this correction here it looks like maybe we did close on the low and this this is some kind of yeah market opened at five and so i'm guessing this is where it opened at five um i don't know why the bar looks like that maybe it's just because it's very low volume actually it looks like i'm missing some data here so I don't know what's going on. I had some problems with my chart. I reloaded it and still didn't reload anything past that point, evidently. So, um, so just ignore that. It doesn't matter. It's well after 2.30. So I reloaded it, my chart a couple of times. So I'm assuming this is correct here. Uh, where it, when it hit the 2.30 mark, I wasn't watching the chart exactly at 2.30. So uh, I assume that's correct, though. I'm gonna, Actually, I'm just going to pause this thing and reload it one more time. And see if that changes. Okay, actually, this thing does close at 359.58. So that's that's four o'clock. So uh, I don't know if that one bar again. I'm gonna just try to reload it. And we'll see what happens. I'll be right back. Okay, I reloaded it, and that big bar did uh, change somewhat. It looks like there's a couple of bars there, uh, so it looks a little different now. Uh, I don't know what's wrong. I've tried to reload it a couple of times and every time it looks a little bit different. So um, I don't know if it's my internet. They, they're upgrade, updating my, up, doing a lot of upgrades in the internet around my neighborhood here where my office is. And uh, it just seems like every time I turn around, I'm losing my internet for 10 or 15 minutes here and there. So uh, if I'm not trading when it happens, I don't always notice it. And then I come back and, and my chart just uh, doesn't look quite right. Or sometimes I don't even notice it. So, <laughs> excuse me. Sometimes I don't even notice it. 
um, until somebody sends me their chart and says, my chart looked totally different. And then I look at it and, and realize something does look different. But uh, I think this is correct. Uh, it's good enough. It's good through 230, which is what I already had anyway. So I think we're good here. But you can see that um, basically it's a range day and the lows were here. And this was, in the end, this is a midline and the highs are up here. But this is how we, we want to draw it, how we originally drew it. And you can see I did the measured move and we hit that. I don't know if you can see that, but I mean, it was actually almost to the tick. It was one tick higher than that. So, and that could just be because my measurement's off down here, just a slight bit as well. So, but uh, I mean, that's, that's about as good as you can get on a measured move. And it tried to get through there and couldn't trying to make that feel that gap, but it looks like the, Something's not right with my chart. See, I can't even get my, I don't know what's going on. I probably need to restart it or something. But this price level right here, um, whatever that is, looks like 50, 87 or so. Uh, seemed to be really stout. Really from 50, 86 to 50, 88 was really stout resistance. So you don't have to have it to the tick. But, but anyway, let's zoom in here. Uh, go through the trades and you had to be patient this morning because there wasn't anything going on early. Uh, we had this 730 news so really it wasn't any sense in taking a trade till after 730 and uh, it didn't take I mean it didn't really you had a little bounce up here but prices came right back into this same price range here but just nothing there. It's just too tight. Uh, there's no setups here. That, that's the second entry short, but the signal bar is no good. Uh, if you had a good signal bar there, then by all means. Uh, actually, that's not a second entry short because that's not. Uh, this low is lower here. So technically, that's a first entry, second entry, third entry, fourth entry, fifth. That's a fifth entry. So, I mean, if that was a good signal bar. Uh, technically I wouldn't have a problem with you treating that like two legs back to the key entry point, but it's, it's not. So if you did have a good signal bar there, you could take that trade. Uh, technically by the count, it is not a second entry though, because it didn't make a new swing low there. That swing low is higher than this swing low and that one's higher than this one and this one's higher. So here's where your original count starts there and people lose. Sometimes people miss that and they think. They start over every time, every time here, and you don't. You can't start the count over, counting to the low side until you make another new low. So the first time you could start the count over was here, because this low is lower than that low, and it works the same way off the high side if you're counting second entry longs or whatever. So, so anyway, you don't really get an entry here. It's just too, it's too. Uh, congested sideways look how flat the EMA is across here got to be real careful in that you do have this trend working down you get a break and a couple legs down and then it then you shoot straight up but no chance to get long here then you're in another tight range this is a failed breakout maybe you take that when the problem is it didn't close back in the range uh, if it breaks below that it's probably going to you're probably going to get a scout because notice this is your trend up and you get a close outside uh, move to a new high. You're better off to wait on the lower high, which comes here. Then you don't have room to scalp out and it might bounce, which it did. It, it wouldn't have stopped you out in this case. But that's the thing. Uh, people don't seem to grasp that either. The, the idea with congestion is just a tiny range. And so you have to trade it with range rules. You quit. You don't count second entries in these little tight ranges. So don't try doing that because it, it'll get you whipsaw is what it'll do so once it starts going sideways and, and it's congestion and congestion is anytime you see three or more bars stacked side by side and at least one of them as a doji like this with no body or a very tiny body like that that's just congestion that's just a tight range and all congestion is a miniature range it's just a small range so this is a small range inside this bigger range and which is a range inside the overnight highs and lows, which is another range. I didn't draw that one because we didn't need it. But uh, if you'd have started trading around here, we'd have drawn those range lines too. So it's range within a range within a range. That's what this is. 
and uh, and you can get little tiny trends in here, but they're not big enough to trade really. So, um, and what happens on a failed breakout of a range is it almost always fails and snaps back. So if this breakout is real close uh, to this low, uh, let me back up there. So if you go short here, uh, you can't go, and, and let me back up. I'm, I'm getting off track here. So the only way to trade this is to trade bars that set up short off the high of the range or bars that set up low off the low of the range. Now, fail breakout, you can trade those. But sometimes they'll take two legs up, so it's better to wait on a short, a, a lower high to, be, to prove, like here, to prove that we're going lower first. Doesn't mean you can't take this, but you might get whips, you might get stopped out on it, and it doesn't have to go very far to stop you out. So here we've already got the, this is played out. The odds are we're probably going lower from here. You're a long way away from the EMA. The odds are on your side here, but you can still get stopped out. So I marked it green. Uh, the lower high is here, but not a good setup. It's still congested, and, and it look how it's bounced a couple of times, and even that line. So it bounces again uh, before it goes lower, and it could have stopped you out before it went lower. So that's the problem with the range. You have to, you don't know that you can't get stopped out there on it because it doesn't have to go very far to stop you out. You want to be able to, to get in as close to this line as you can without it making a without it closing outside of it and see so here it closed outside that line so but you so you wanted it to close inside and still have room to get out and it doesn't it closed outside even though it has room to scalp out before it gets back down to this line and when you're sideways you don't care too much about the EMA you just know you aren't trending if you worry about that EMA you'll never get a trade so when it's sideways like that, we don't, we're not interested. I mean, I'm not going to say just that the EMA is not still important, but on a range, you'll see it, how it goes back and forth through the EMA with little, you know, with a little fanfare. So don't worry so much about the EMA. It's that midline in there. If it's been holding multiple times and you got to be careful, like here, it's not going back to the highs. It's kind of getting stuck at the midline. And you don't want to go long because until you've proven it's going back and forth, back and forth, and then you can go long or short. So I hope that that's just like a little mini um, lesson on ranges and congestion. Uh, go back and listen to that over and over till you get it. So, but anyway, we drop on down here, and this is basically a double top. So this is a first entry, second entry. And it's in regardless, it's a triple test with a nice signal bar. Now, normally I would say you want it to with this trend channel, you got to pay attention to it. But in the end, I think I just didn't draw it properly. I think what it is, you got a leg here. You get a close outside and you low. It's clearly two legs down, triple test. And it bounces. Look how far we are away from the EMA. If, if it breaks lower, it's not going to go much further, most likely because uh, the odds are it's coming back and we're in a range. And so I like that trade and, and that's probably more realistic of what it looks like right there. Actually, it might even be, you want to touch all three of those. So it's probably more like that. Uh, and you get a close outside and you low, but it's clearly two legs down. So it's a second entry long and then you're in this congestion. So there's no trades there. It does break higher and it's congested again. So no trades there. And then we come back up here to the top and you find resistance right where you're hoping to get a setup, but you don't really get a good setup there. You can't, that signal bar doesn't qualify. This one, maybe, um, if you got enough room to get out from here to here, that one, you could argue to maybe be green, but I still, that just looks like congestion. And without that being a really good signal bar, I'm probably not going to take it. I'm going to wait for a lower high, which comes here. And that's the first break, and, and but it, prices don't break lower, and then they don't break lower again. Then you got congestion again, and see what happens when it breaks lower? It snaps right back. So even on that little congestion, that little tiny spot of three bars, it snaps right back. Now you might have been able to scalp out of that, but you don't know that you will. So you would have been able to scalp out of that one, but a lot of times it'll go right here and snap back. So that's the problem. There's no rule that says you can't trade out of congestion. But 
it's going to act like a range and it's going to snap back more times than not. And so you, it has to be a really strong trend or uh, to the, and you're entering back with the trend, that kind of thing. Otherwise, uh, or, or you have to understand why the congestion's forming. Now, right here, it's probably pretty clear why it's forming because it, there's still a little momentum, but all the selling's coming in there. So it can't get through there. So it starts just going sideways because there's still a lot of selling. And then slowly it weans off and, it, and they give it another shot and take it back again. But here you get your break, a couple legs down to a new low, and it bounces right there at the midline. Um, I marked this one just green because it, it's, it's uh, and you can count that as a new high. Uh, and so there's a hidden second entry in there, but that's not a good enough reason by itself. Um, but it is off the midline. You do have a break here at a new low. You would expect it to try to retest this high. Even if it can't get through, it's probably going to try it. A lot of times it will, especially since this is played out with a break and two legs down. And um, so I'll mark this one green. I'm not crazy about it, but there's plenty of room back to these highs. And you can see this time we break out and go higher. Now, notice once we broke out here, this is congestion, but it finally pushes higher, snaps back, and gives you another test. Of, you tested this trend line one, two, three times. Uh, it's close to being a triple test. This actually breaks lower on this real bearish bar and instantly reverses. If it goes out the other side, I'm probably going to go with it. You could wait for this to close and go long there, but that's a really big bar. So in that case, maybe you wait on the lower high, but there's just not enough room to get out there. So that's a concern. And you see what happens. It doesn't go very far. And then you're back in congestion again. Here, it, it takes off. It doesn't, and it doesn't snap back. But you still can't go long into that resistance there. So hopefully you're starting to see what I mean by trading congestion. Runs up, you get your close outside this main trend line, runs up to a new high, and where does it go? It goes exactly a measured move right there, and then turns down. And notice that we had our break, couple legs up, and move to a new high. Then you get this bearish bar way away from the EMA. I like going short there. It's probably coming back to the EMA to minimum. And then notice you get a first entry, second entry, and that's a little congested. But it's still making higher highs and higher lows. They're not just going straight sideways. Uh, so you could treat this like a little breakout, but it closes back inside. And there's, and we're coming off the high of the range. So you'd expect prices to go lower here. I like that one. There's another lower high here, uh, but you don't want to, you've already got a break now of this trend channel and two legs to a new low. And so it could bounce. And sure enough, it bounces. You get a trend going back the other way again. And once again, it finds resistance up here, the same place. Uh, you actually get a triple test right here, but, but look at that congestion across there. And look how it's, uh, it's bouncing off that EMA every time. Now pay attention to the EMA because it's showing it bounce off of it every time. And this is not necessarily, we're not necessarily playing just straight across a range. We're getting trends going back and forth. Um, but if it breaks through and comes back and tests and fails, then you got a failure. That's a first entry, second entry. So when it breaks lower there, that's a failure. That's where you, I want to go short. And you can see this takes off and it runs on down. There's just a first entry right there. Not a good signal bar. Uh, they'll come down here. We bounce off the low side, come back and Notice it. Notice where you went to, right to the midline of the middle, original range. It bounces. You get a first entry, second entry, and you get a close outside new high, and a second entry short. All of, and this actually broke higher and turned down. I wouldn't trade that on the engulfing bar, but if this closes bearish back inside, go short there. And you can see it still snapped back, but it went lower, and this one works out. Uh, but we're but we got a lot more bearish momentum here, so we're trading with the trend. And it runs down. It doesn't make a new low. It makes a triple test. If you got a good signal bar right there, I'd said go long, but you don't get one. And it just takes off. Comes up here. You finally get a close outside. And um, you get a first entry. And then 
it's kind of a repeat pattern of a couple of these others over here that we showed you. Uh, it breaks out, but close, this one closes right back. It actually trades inside, closes, just looks like it's right there. It, uh, I like that one because now you got a one, two, three. I, he actually tested that line more than three times, but it's at least a triple test. Uh, you get a lower high here, but we're back in that range, and you've already broken out of it, so you probably cleared everything out. I did not mark this one because it's a kind of a doji, but you could argue for that to be green on a lower high, and it turns out to be a great trade, but uh, I'm not crazy about it because um, it's back in the range, and it closed at the midline, and there's not much room there if it does bounce on you, so, but it turns out to be a really good trade. And these are all just first entries. You can't really enter those. Uh, you get a close outside, move to a new high. Actually, I'm sorry, close outside, move to a new low. Then you're trending up. And notice how you make two legs up. I didn't mark this one. There's a second entry right there. And there's a good reason because it's still in that trend. And that's right off that trend line. It Twice here, it's closed right at the EMA. So wait for a break on this one uh, or a lower high and you actually get a break and a new high, but you don't get a setup because that's an inside bar. This is your signal bar. You can't go short right there and you and on this inside bar, you can't say, okay, well, I'll go short there because it, look, it's congestion on top of that. A lot of times you'll go short there, it'll hit that line and go straight back up and make another, make two legs up to a new high, but this one drops on down. Uh, you get a close outside here, two legs up, and a second entry short right off the EMA. Now, that's a classic second entry. It, it, this, this actually looks a little congested. Uh, and you might argue it's congested, but it's, it's close because it doesn't have that tiny body. I mean, that body's only a few ticks. So if you want to play it safe, you say, okay, I'm not going short there because that looks congested. But... Um, there's still plenty of room back to this low to scalp out and the odds are you're going to make a new low on this because we've been trending down for a little bit. You probably, you know, you want to see if maybe you get a measured leg there as well. And you see, we don't quite get that, but you still get your break two legged correction back to the EMA in a downtrend. I mean, we're making lower highs and lower lows here. And so that's a pretty good setup. Uh, doesn't quite make the measure move and then it bounces. Of course, you don't want to go long there either. Runs up. Here you get a close outside and a new high. Again, I didn't mark it. And you might argue that it's close to a triple test right there. Uh, but this is higher. These... These two don't match up exactly. This this is higher. So there is a hidden second entry in there. Notice it runs up. Correction runs up. You're way away from the EMA. So it's another one. You know, you could argue that that's green. Uh, but it's not an ideal setup. It turns out to be a great move, but it's not ideal. I want to take sure things most of the time. So uh, and then we're just chopping sideways. That is definitely... Um, congestion. I didn't draw it, but you know, I always draw these just because I don't draw it. I can see it just glancing at it. And I do try to draw it usually for the chart lessons, but it takes forever to add some of this stuff if I didn't have it. So I don't always draw it, but just clearly there's congestion there, but you can also see there's a trend working up and that takes us into 230. So you really don't get another opportunity to enter this because, I mean, even if you didn't see this trend working up, this is a failed breakout. To, when it closes that far outside, you got to wait on a lower high, and that doesn't come till here. And you can see it does go lower there, but you couldn't trade that signal bar either. It's, it's, it doesn't qualify for an entry. So anyway, there it is. A little longer chart lesson today because I went into these ranges and congestion a little more. So hopefully you learned something about them. Um, they're really important. To, you know, they're, 
they're just like ranges. So if you don't understand range rules, get your manual out, read it. Uh, go watch some of the videos on the website so you understand what happens in ranges. Um, and just go back and watch what I described over and over until it makes sense to you if it didn't if you didn't get it the first time because this stuff is it's not that complicated. But if you don't understand it and you've never seen it before, it takes a while. And it, you have to really understand it. And most people go, they read through the map. They don't even, most people don't even read the manual. They watch the videos and start trying to reproduce it. The others go and read the manual once and throw it aside and think they've got it all. But there's no way. You got to read that manual over and over and over like a study guide because there's too much in there. There's no way you can get things that seem trivial or important and, and, um, uh, and some things build on other things, so you got to pick up the first thing. So treat that thing like a study manual and read it over and over and over by section. Make sure you get one section, then go to the next section. And then eventually it will all start to click and come together. But uh, the other misconception is that we're trading patterns here, and people start trying to learn these patterns. And you'll see these patterns all over the chart. If you don't understand what prices are doing, that's why we draw the trend lines and the ranges you have to understand what prices are doing. Uh, we can predict with a high degree of accuracy what prices are doing in the short term. Now, what's going to happen tomorrow, we, we, it gets harder then. But in the short term, the pr price action will tell you what it's probably going to do next. And so we can predict that. And once you can predict that with a high degree of accuracy, you can start to capitalize on it. We, we, we take advantage of that predict that ability. And, but if you can't read the chart, you can't do that. So you've got to learn to read the chart first because the patterns are worthless if you don't. We're chart readers first and foremost. The context of the chart will tell you what we're going to do, what you should do. And we'll be trending up here and somebody will take a second entry sh short and we'll know why it failed. Well, we're in an uptrend or vice versa. There'll be, they'll, they'll, Prices will be trading long and they'll take a second entry long and it fails and they can't figure out why. It's because it, you're trading against the trend. You're not following the price action. You're not trading where you need to know where prices are trying to go and what their targets are and try to get on with them. Now, will you all get it right 100% every time? No, but you'll, for the most part, you, the prices will tell you where they're going and if you understand how to read the chart, you know what the targets are. Just like I told you, this was the target. And the prior target to that would be the measured move, which is all we could get out of it. But that's exactly where it went. And if you understand how ranges work, you know to look for that. You've seen me show you over and over. Look for that measured move. Look for it to fill that gap. We see it over, over and over. So it, it's very predictable. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. This is almost 30 minutes today. Um, again, we'll be back tomorrow. It'll be a regular day tomorrow. Um, and then I'm taking off Friday, so no uh, mid-morning chart on Friday. Please hold your emails. Don't send me trading questions from Friday just so I won't come back to a million trading questions. Um, wait till next week uh, if you don't get it in tomorrow. Uh, and try to get it in early tomorrow because if you get in after late in the afternoon, I'm not going to answer it till I come back anyway. And then it'll probably sit there and get, it'll probably be way down the line. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow for a normal day. I'm done for today. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com and we'll see you next time.